Hello, my viewers, and welcome back to the channel. My video title, you know what this video is about. How can the Steelers continue to improve their offense? Welcome to Can We Adjust segment. Um, the Steelers looked pretty good last game. Last game, the Steelers played at a very good level, a very good level offensively. I'm um, seeing the offense go out there and being able to move the ball. I know the first drive was three and out, but after that, they, they moved the ball well. The long distance touchdown, a beautiful pass from Kenny Pickett to Calvin Austin. They played well, and the rushing attack was um, solid as well, too. Solid. We need to see a little more from that, too. But the main things I think I feel like the Steelers can do to keep improving their offense, of course, is Kenny Pickett. You know, the quarterback, stay consistent. We've seen Kenny Pickett kind of get better each game. You know, the first game of the season versus the 49ers, you can see all the rush. You can see him not playing too well. Um, and, and, you know, making some bad decisions. In the second game against the Browns, he hit on half his throws. He made some big throws when it mattered, though. But he hit on half his throws. But you can st kind of still see him not playing to his ability or the potential we've seen him play before. And in this game against the Raiders, we've seen him probably have his best game as a Steeler. I think this is uh, was his 15th start, or 16th, 16th start, 17th start, something around that um, number. Um, so this is probably his best game. He had 108 pass array and two passing touchdowns. The 220, 220, 230 passing yards up around that range. And um he went out there and he fired all cylinders. Fired all cylinders, hit some big time throws, um, big touchdown pass to Pat Fryermuth, the touchdown pass to Calvin Austin. Him and him and George Pickens are all on the same page. They've been playing very good. The KP to GP connection or Pickett to Pickens connection, we want to call it. They've been on the um a good path and they've been kind of improving a lot. And um also, Najee Harris, he has 60, 68, 69 rushing yards around that range. 19 attempts. Of course, not the most flashiest and the most prettiest thing, but he's still leading our team in a yards attempt. Um, I feel like Najee Harris, they just, just got to kind of mix the scheme up a little bit. They kind of got the wrong run, rushing scheme for him. And if, and if he played for a team like, let's see, what's the team? Got to fit perfectly for him. The Ravens, the way they play, understand it a lot. The downhill, the single back formation, downhill. The I formation getting downhill. The Ravens, the Eagles. Who else play like that? Ravens, Eagles, Falcons. Ravens, Eagles, Falcons, um, Patriots. Those teams that play that big formation, that big 12 personnel formation, and those teams that kind of play a lot of I formation, they like to run the ball downhill and like down um straight through you. Um, I feel like he I feel like he'll fit perfectly in those type of schemes. Matt Canada. Um, did a good, did a pretty good job in calling the game, but I feel like he still had to get, he got to call a better plays than Najee. Like having Najee in the backfield with Kenny Pickett in shotgun formation, and then doing a the little draws and the inside little zone runs, those are cool and all, but those not really get anything. How about we do things that make Najee successful? When you get under center and you uh, have Kenny hand it off to him, he get downhill full head of steam, and we see him like break some passes and make, I mean, break some uh, runs off, and has some good runs doing it that way too as well. Najee Harris is a back; you got to keep feeding him. And but most of the time Najee did start off kind of slow to start the season off because I think his first year he did that kind of start off slow, but when he got to like week seven, week six, when I'm like, he got to week seven ish, week eight ish, he started playing very good football. Like oh man, and he got to, and then the following year same thing, um last year, and then this year kind of start off a little slow. Um, so maybe about right at that time too as well, because in the cold, for some reason when it get like cold out there, when they start getting like mid season, when they start getting to like um, late October, I mean, mid October to late October, Najee Harris come to play, and you know he come to play like that, and that's that can be that can be a good sense, um, especially for you know for, um, for you trying to make the playoffs, and you have a quarter uh, running back like that playing at that high level too as well, and Najee, I know some people, um, some of the fans acting like Najee just some type of scrub and not. He didn't play well his interior with the Steelers, Steelers and they act like he can't catch either. I'm like, Najee can still catch. He can still go out there and catch. He can line up. We've seen him line up before as a receiver and stuff. He might not be as elusive um, as a Jalen Warren because Jalen Warren is a faster player. But he, I think Najee is still the better back. Um, you, can't, you can't teach 6'3", two, six, um, six, 240 pounds, you know, freight train and you know, Najee is. And, um, they can um, – kind of call the right plays and get them downhill and just keep everything downhill. It probably worked well. We've seen them do a lot more of that this past game, so hopefully they're kind of converting and doing more of that and kind of mixing it up because Jalen Warren can get the other stuff, the little other things and um, from shotgun information. You can get those and you can get Najee that because that make teams get confused a lot and you start setting up some play actions and stuff um, also too with Najee as well. But Najee has scored, what, 20 touchdowns over the past two years, the Steelers? He scored seven receiving touchdowns, I mean seven rushing touchdowns Previous of the past two years, and he scored three um, each of the past two years as well. So he had 20 total touchdowns of the past two years of the Steelers. 
and um, he got well well over two thousand scrimmage yards. I think the closest like because his first year he had like four hundred or five hundred ish um receiving yards, and last year about three hundred ish around that range too. So he he got a lot of yards. He has some good yardage on him. Uh, he can go out there and make some plays. So twenty touchdowns over the past two years. You also get that being a scrub or being just a bad player. So I think um Najee's a back that kind of get better as the season goes on. And of course, they get the scheme, just get them downhill. You know, a lot of off formation, a lot of 12 personnel, a lot of just getting downhill, you know, single back formation, have Kenny on the, on the center and just giving him the ball, let him go full throttle downhill. Kind of like we used to do with Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell was never the fastest running back. We used to play those big formations and had a fullback leading the charge as a leading blocker, kind of like the 49ers do it um, too. They have, they have the fullback out there at the leading blocker. We used to do it with Roosevelt Knicks in the old days. It used to work out well. Le'Veon Bell getting downhill. Even D'Angelo Williams, he was in the system too as well. He did a um, pretty good job filling up for Le'Veon Bell when he was injured. Not injured, he was suspended um, for that weed stuff that he had. But I think that's one of the things we can do to help um, the run, rushing tackle out too as well. Um, also, keep the common sense play calling coming. You know, because um, the Steelers did some things that was logical this time. We've seen when it was um, the third and one. Can you pick it to the QB sneak straight down, straight down the middle? We're seeing some plays where it's like, oh, we got his third, third and short, like third or four, third and five. Maria Allen Robinson with the speed out. Can you just throw it to him? A toss. It's playing smart. Instead of trying to do crazy things and situations, just plan to get the first down, move the sticks. Instead of trying to get it all in one play, I feel like a lot of times we kind of like mess ourselves up and kind of got a rhythm with the flow because like you, can, you can't call a run play that get five yards and you call another run play that gets like four yards. And then, well, okay, we're going to do on that last play is one yard to get. Just put the big formation out there and get downhill. And sometimes we used to see, like, last year what the Steelers used to do. They'd do a run play. They'd do a run play, um, we get five yards, right? And then the next play, they do it for a sweep, a sweep. And you'd be like, okay, what's, what's, going, what's going on? And then he gets, he'll lose yardage. And then they have to um, be third and long and have to go out there and make something out of nothing. But the past, the past game right here against the Raiders, I've seen a lot of improvement. I think we're going in the right direction. And of course, not, the, not perfect, of course. We got, we got a lot of things to fix and stuff, too, still. But I think once they, um, I like the improvement of the rushing attack, though, um, being able to actually move the ball and get some push, Najee getting some nice runs. I feel like if um, they can just start calling those downhill schemes and get Najee just going downhill like a freight train, it would be nice. And um, yeah, go out there and do that. But that's all I really got for this video today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think the Steelers should do to continue to improve their offense. Um, but I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Peace out.